Thanks for being here. Let's do it. Anybody have a question? Who are the influencers that you like listening to right now that you like? Are, are, are you listening to anyone or are you just making up your own stuff and you're all good with that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have genuinely, this is like a straight up thing and you know it's funny, did you guys see that I posted my report card? Yeah. yeah. That was a really interesting insight to me which is I just didn't realize how many people didn't believe me. I just continued to not be believed. Like it's my life. Like I think people think I'm exaggerating. Like I think people thought I was a B and C student. Like and that was a really interesting insight to me. Like when I tell you that I've never listened to anybody, I could not tell you, I've never read a line a line of Seth Godin content in my life. And so, and I genuinely believe with my whole heart that that has a lot to do with why I do well. Because if you're consuming, you're regurgitating and everybody's consuming the same shit. And so I think the reason, I don't think I'm that smart. I just think I say the same stuff as other people I just think that because I don't know how it's actually said, I came up with my way of saying it and that just might have worked for people because they just heard it a different way. I genuinely believe that. Yeah. And so I think that's interesting. And so I protect that. I think I protected it through school by getting D's and F's and I think I protect it through the way I run my life which is I consume, I consume you. I consume your reactions. You know, and that gives me insight. So yeah, I don't really listen. I don't need anything, you know? Is that what you prescribe for other people too? If they can pull it off. I just think I'm dramatically more talented than other people. Yeah. What's it look like for you to balance business and family well? It's a moving target. Yeah. And I haven't always done it well. You guys, for the hardest core of you, you guys have heard me say like, I regret the first five years of my marriage. We should've went, I I wish I had those memories of those seven to 10 vacations, you know? Mm -hmm. But it helped me do a better job with the kids, you know? I don't have those regrets. I'm pumped that I started my day today at 10 and watched Misha and Xander's assembly. You know, something that I don't, I don't know if I would have done 12 years ago. So, it's a moving target and the truth is for anybody that's struggling with it or thinking about it, it just only works the way everything works which is constant communication. What Lizzie cares about is different today than what she cared about yesterday, let alone two years ago. So, uh, first of all, thanks for having us here. No worries. Um, so what's your it was funny, when I did that offer, I was like, what's the, be-? you know, it's like, I was like, cause be, like, did anybody do the same thing with Thank You Economy? Did anybody, was anybody been around long enough for that? So with Thank You Economy, I did a similar thing, like buy this thing and something's gonna happen, buy the books, and we sent a thank you box, right? We just sent a, bu- but it was like $100 worth of shit, which was like more than the books cost, and I was like proud, I was like, you know, like, that was good, like they, they've got more stuff, but I was like, what's, you know, the number one asset is access. People are willing to fly fucking Australia, you know? Alaska, you know? You must have been so pissed, right? You're like, I got Georgia, and then she's like, and she's like, she's like, Australia, you're like, fuck! That's awesome. There's somebody coming from Ireland who's not here yet. Wow. Amazing. What was that? Yeah, brother. Question was, what is, can you break down like your thought process when you enter a room? Like, how do you break down the situation? How do you analyze it? Like, how, how do you choose what actions to take? That's interesting. I come in blank. That's why I like Q&A. I come in blank and super confident. <laughs> and I stay to my shit. Boy, will I not reach. I, I, you know, this is a really interesting transformation even for me the last year because obviously my profile is much stronger than it was in a, a year ago today and I've been around for a decade digitally. So I've been like, I've been noticed and in the game since 2006. But between the content, I mean it's so funny, when everybody, anybody razzes me on social like, especially Instagram where my strategy has been very quote driven and very rah-rah, the most version of myself there because it's just the medium that I think it's right for, right? So there more than anywhere else because fucking Facebook is really detailed with the show and other things. There I'll get the occasional like, all right, enough, I get it, hustle, like fucking give me a detail. And I always get so pissed at that person because I'm like, you're such a fucking idiot. I'm giving you details every day. Watch me. Don't, Don't listen to me. Do what I'm doing. It will work. It works every time. 
So, you know, uh, I don't even know why I went there, but <laughs> the punchline is I stay in my sh- lane. I know what I'm talking about, about what I'm talking about. And so what I'm pretty good at actually is forcing the room to go in my direction. Like if I walked into a room and the conversation was gonna be about SEO, cause they're like, hey, I hear Vayner's now doing everything and really wanna talk about SEO, I'll energy wise push them into Facebook and social, you know? Cause it's what I wanna talk about. So I keep it on my turf. And then, so I, yeah, actually I think I can break this down. I keep it on my turf but then everything else is about them. That's the non-debatable. It's gonna be on my turf. Now, tell me what you want. Even this, there's no debate of the format. There was no like, how do you guys want to do this? This is what we're gonna do. <laughs> now everything else is about you. Got it? Yeah. You ever have to go on the defense? Or you just have the ball on your court? I'm never on defense. I'll bail, I'll bail. Every, when I, when I was dating, if I saw anything that wasn't, in, if, if I dated, so I hate negativity, it's why we have a great culture. If I dated a girl that I realized very quickly like she liked the, in, like it was intriguing to have conflict, I literally bailed immediately, out, forever. I just, I have no effort for defense. I'm trying to win every game 477 to 433 and I'm talking about baseball. You know what I mean? Like it's pure. But you know what I mean? But, but baseball, where there's lower scoring. That's why that's the analogy. Fucking soccer. Like I'm trying, to, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to score so many points that I'm not worried about the casualties. I mean, you need to know this more because you've been at Vayner so much. Like, like I never care about the failures at Vayner. I love when people come into me and be like, listen, I gotta talk to you about this problem. It's really gonna undermine us. I'm like, are you a fucking idiot? How the fuck do you think we got here? If you want me to play your micro game, I'm gonna look like everybody else. So I'm always on the offense, always macro, and always very aware of what I want to happen. So with that, you're running an old school business model and scaling it. Like, because this I re- is an old school business model? A hundred percent. Old school, like not new school with new school technology. Every, inter- school. every internet friend I had texted me that I was a fucking idiot for starting VaynerMedia. And this move is an old school move and it's, it's I mean, a huge risk. What's a risk? taking on a, a building and the, the amount of people. How are you scaling the unscalable? By recognizing This is unscalable to everyone's imagination. Right, because I recognize that that's my strength. My strength is people. My strength is marketing. How do you teach this young crowd old school? Because I mean, Cause like, most of them don't look like they got out of college. You'd be stunned how many of the young kids have old school tactics and beliefs and how many of the old school have young school tactics. It's not an age thing, it's a DNA thing. Uh, so you're hiring DNA that way. We're trying, oh, no. by the way, so. no, no. We're firing people that don't have the DNA. Yeah, I get That's smart. People are crippled by, high, I mean look, you have insight. I mean, throw it in here, you've been around. I've worked in a lot of different ad agencies and this is by far the friendliest place I've ever <laughs> Because, so because of course it's true because I fire all the bad people. <laughs> like, and by the way, if you're here for a week and you're in that moment where you know, somebody can hide here for even a year. You know, just, it's, we're, we're at scale. They may be able to you know, kind of get away with it for a little while but not for real. You know what I mean? And a year is probably impossible. Six months, yes. So you know, to the answer is because that's what I'm good at. You know, that was the punchline. Let me build, like, do you know how, how impossible this company is to beat? I got the craziest email from a recruiter. I mean, like the craziest, which was, I've been trying to recruit from your, we were put on an assignment to steal your people by a competitor. We got zero. He's like, we've never seen this before. Can we work with you? So, I, I just thought I could do it. It's really no different than like, you know, like being the best basketball player or singer, like, I don't know, that sounds hard, you know? So, so scalability doesn't scare me because people have scaled people for many years. We're just in a tech age where it doesn't seem as cool. You know? Hell yeah. Just on that growth thing, you know, I don't know how big or small my businesses are, but going from that kind of lifestyle where uh, business where you, you, your business is creating cash and you've got a small team to going to a much larger performance business where 
um, potentially there's a bit in the middle of this desert where cash flow dries up or um, and, and profit goes down. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm, I've got a great lifestyle business that generates a stack of cash. Yep. And I want to go to performance business, but I know there's this hideous desert in the middle and I want to get through that as quickly as possible. So you've done that a couple of times. Yes, I have. What would, like, if you were... What's the punchline? Yeah, other than all the stuff that I know already that you say. The punchline is all the stuff that you know that I already say, <laughs> which is those three years are not just going to be as fun. Yeah, and do it fast. But also respect that it might take some time. Yeah, right. But no different. You're such a young woman. Like, what's wrong with two? Surprised. Yeah, that's fine. You're such a young woman. Like, what's wrong with two years in between? Nothing. I'm not that's, afraid of By the way, it. that's it. But we're gonna make less money this year at 100 million than we made last year at 67. Why? Net. I don't mean percentage. Net. Why? Because I'm getting greedier. No. Meaning, they're in trouble. Them. <laughs> <laughs> I see it. Which means I overinvested. More people. More capabilities. Because I'm gonna take the whole fucking pie. So. What, what is you know what I mean? Like, I'm not worried about how much cash I'm gonna take home in 2016 because I can take a lot more in 2020 than I, you know, it's much more fun to take home 44 million in 2020 than 3 million in 2017, 18, and 19 mm-hmm. instead of 4 million in 2018. Like, people are, 99% of the market is short term. And the 1% that isn't and has the talent wins every time. Which makes no sense because unless you're gonna die, you should only play long term. There was a stat that some dude in Mexico City said, one of these like futurist type of characters, I'm sure he's smart, I have no idea who, so I just, but he was right before me as I was mic'd up and he says, it's been scientifically proven, so I don't know if it has or not because I've learned to take that with a grain of salt, but that 85% of what humans make decisions about is irrational and that spoke to me because A, I think it's higher and B, it's why I think all my success is happening. I am stunningly the most rational and the most practical of all, yet I don't seem it. And it, when he said it, I'm like, right, that's why. Because the rest of the market is irrational. Uh, I always find it intriguing of how people share their story about discovering you. Um, I <laughs> that's you, deep. my friend was interviewed by Marie Flor- Forleo. Yes. And you were the next video on the queue being interviewed when Jeb Jeb came out. So okay. Like, right, who, who the hell is this? Yeah. That's it. I was a follower then. <laughs> right. Do you still take that mentality of being everywhere? Yes. Like the eight view podcast. Never too fancy. When there's not a book involved? Yes. Okay. Because, I mean, the, the potential of being in front of everyone that doesn't even know who you are is like, it's Just, crazy. It is crazy. Or is it? <laughs> There's plenty of people opening up fast food uh, things with two million YouTube followers. I think we could uh, bump your number up a little bit. Yeah, you know what's funny? I just, it's, I think you know this at this point. Like, I really mean that. I don't give a fuck. Right. <laughs> 330,000? Mazel tov. Yeah. And? Yeah. And they're their most loyal followers, too. And if not? I'm gonna make more money than Pootie Pie. <laughs> <laughs> Honey Empire. Mm-hmm. Honey Empire. They both matter. But and who? So and who? How, how do you maintain that? By making activity? all my actions, mm-hmm. Honey and Empire, yeah. and then letting the people that are capable stay, and letting the people that are not capable either choose or be forced to leave. So empower them with that decision. Binary. Mm-hmm. Like, let me let me hang on here because I want you to get it through my actions. That's it. I sent an email to 140 employees this week asking for who the strongest and the weakest employee was that they work with. It sent garbage through our company. People emailing that we've changed, people emailing like, like, like websites to post it, like fear. Gave me an indication on who's scared, who's not, who understands, who doesn't. Everybody boxes everything in and creates context, which means they then lose context. The reason I scale so well is every behavior I do is predicated on creating the most context from the reaction to my action.
Yeah, it's like, I don't even know what that means, but probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being dead serious, I really don't. <laughs> But, but you know what I mean? Like even an indicator of like, I have a re- you know, it's interesting, the people I don't know, the people I do know, like why they're here, it's all context building. I'm obsessed with context. I'm the greatest listener you've ever met. It's just that I talk so much nobody realizes it. So you say, um, which I'm kind of trying to recalibrate my brain around too, like you love losing. Love and, it. And, um, you know why? No. Because I don't care how anybody judges my losses. You only care about losing because you care about what other people think about your loss. Yeah. And so on, on that note, because I, I saw you at Traffic Conversion in San Diego. Yes, uh, that was a good one. It was. A lot of fun. First time I saw you. And then Did wife, you know who I was before? Sorry? Did you know who I was before I took no, the stage? No. I so, lo- that's the best. And so immediately, <laughs> my wife and I were driving home from San Diego to Orange County and we started like figuring out that you had a podcast. And so I went back in time from like the first one all the way up to like the, the, the ones we have now, right? Like 200 stuff. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, and it's, it's. So what did you take away from it? Just. Like in that kind of a binge, what was like so, so coming with zero context? Yeah. What was like the. The biggest things, I think. The greatest human ever? That, one of them. Yes. Uh, I have no <laughs> exactly. idols myself. Like you are yes. the one that I would say is like the closest because you are doing exactly what I want to do. And I have like a, awesome. a mini, mini agency. Love it. You know, Good for you. Not close to anything of, of what you're doing. And so, um, and you know what's so crazy about that? Even the way you hedge it, it means nothing, right? right. Like I love, I'm always fascinated by what you know. Like I appreciate the humility, and like it's so interesting that we do that as humans. Like even context shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Um, so I almost lost like my train of thought. So um, that's right. I already lost it once today. One of the one of the biggest takeaways that you mentioned, and this is not even a question, I just want to say thank you, is the net net thing of like all the small things that you lose, but in the big picture, like. 99% of the things don't matter, like you recently posted on Instagram. And so Dude, I opinion. swear on, on, on the New York Jets, which I've never lied on in my entire life, I genuinely only care about the health of my family. It's so crazy, you couldn't even wrap your head around it. Do you know how many copies of a book of how VaynerMedia went from 100 million to going out of business I could sell? All of them. Like, it's a no-lose game for me. It's not scary. One of the recent uh, daily bees you mentioned the like the hockey stick curve, you know, like the last six months of like was it five hundred K like subscribers like Oh Facebook. Facebook. So, yeah, well, I know like, your team or you like analyze like the metrics and uh, the analytics of just seeing I know your content is insane lately. Yeah, but so it's the it's everywhere. the five or six videos that go ballistic that change the outcome. And then, like this, new the fucking intern video went Insano, like I mean, it's so crazy. It actually two new demos for me in some level. Um, you can tell Danny if he wants to hang. He can. Uh, the urban market because of Breakfast Club, right? Yeah. Hip hop, African American, Latino, just hip hop heads like sneaker heads. Like Breakfast Club went viral. Those clips with Shah the God, right? Viral. So a lot more urban. And the intern video, and much younger. That's it. Two huge new demos that a video that got 20, 30 million reach on Facebook created. Facebook's television, guys. You're one video away from changing your life. People just don't believe it. And people are also not willing to make a video every day, always, constantly. And most importantly, and this is just straight up, most people aren't capable of producing content every day that's interesting, good, thoughtful, entertaining, fascinating, pretty, like it's hard. I, I think I said it today, or I, did I say it today? Like on social, like talent? Or I made a vid, D-Rock help me. <laughs> <laughs> Where did I do that? Talent is, re, this is there's a, bar, oh, the interview. Yeah. With, <laughs> talent, guys, talent. Yeah. Talent's real, it's a real thing. Which uh, platform has your most responsive audience? So you, you asked uh, yes or no question, who responds the most and the fastest? I think the attention is deepest on Snapchat. I really do, by like percentage. You know, Facebook, you, you know what's so funny? Back to the analytics, like, I'm in the branding business and all of you guys are in the sales business. And once you understand what I mean by that, that's where the whole thing unlocks. Everybody's into the sales. What I mean by that is, Everybody's trying to look at the tactics. 
I'm in the religion. Reason I don't know is because I'm playing forever and I'm building brand. That just doesn't matter. You talked about that. And I By the way, if that, I'll give you go yeah. in a second. If that was the way the game was played, everybody's looking at the metrics. If this was math, it would have been figured out a long time ago. You need to let that go. Right. Math gets you rich. You can figure out a conversion, a landing page optimization, a moment in time. Math doesn't get you what I want. So when we coach, we talk about you gotta have perspective to see kind of what the athlete's doing. You have the vision, the coach's eye. You have to have attention. If you can't get them to pay attention to you, you're screwed. Yeah. And the next thing is direction. You have perspective, talent. You have the ability to see things that probably we, a lot of us miss. We get that. We definitely have our attention though. We have our, now we're looking at you saying, well, we want to mirror it. We might not be able to keep it the same pace. A version of it for myself. Now I push that hard. I want to make sure everybody gets their version of yeah. it around what they want. I hate when kids are like, I want to buy the, the Cavaliers now. I'm like, <laughs> did you before? <laughs> you know? They're missing the point though. That's, they're missing the point. Yeah, the people that say, okay, That's right. Yeah, so we have, you have our attention and that's probably the event too. Yes. What's the direction though? What, what's the next move? Because you're pushing From me day. or through you guys to you? Through us. Self-awareness. Can't get that. Nope. Can't get that though. Yeah. I don't want to give you anything else. You know what I mean? I, I, you have to understand, advice is a shit business. Because you lack context. Do you know how much context to give you real advice I would need in this setting? Is your dad sick? Did your dad, mom leave your dad? Do you have a sibling that's fucking crushing it and always did? Do you have, like, there's so much context I actually need to give the direction that I would feel good about that I'd rather, in a world where everybody's selling tactics and advice and direction, I'd, I'm going to be an ungodly force of nature against leveling up the thinking at every moment. And then through my actions, hoping that you guys pick up on them and replicate them. And then answering the other question, the actual uh, tangible of the business, what's the direction now? If you push us to, to buy a book, we're gonna buy a book. Yes. You got our attention. Yes. You say, hey, buy the product. Yeah. Small business, van and media. I don't, we'll want, I don't right. want, I don't want you guys. Yeah. Not yet. No, no, no. There's so much. You know what's, dude? Think about this, and you know this. There's more money in it for me to go after you than the other. (laughs) Are you kidding? But you haven't done it. You do it once every two years on a book for twelve bucks. Right. Just don't need it right now. And I say right now. I mean, I've contemplated. I, I want to. I want to create a VaynerMedia SaaS product that's five thousand dollars a month that helps you. I just don't have it yet. And I can't take your 60,000 if I don't have it. But if I have it, I'll give it to you. Because you'll win. So Vayner Talent that you might have saw in the last episode, that's gonna be a huge department. Everybody wants to be me. There's people in here that actually would pay $25,000 for me to do it. They feel like they can make the math work to have their D-Rock and my machine. Here's the punchline. It will work. So that's cool. So I feel good about it. That'll be the first time I enter into slightly that territory. Truth is, I'm gonna hold it off because I still don't want to go there. I'll do it with, you know, Tyra Banks, you know, but if I can get there, I would. I'm, I only sell what I'm proud of. I'm obsessed with selling stuff. Like, stuff. This Amazon arbitrage is real. This eBay arbitrage is real. Like, I don't know how much money she needs, But I can tell you, it is scary, scary, if she's willing to study eBay three hours a night for three months, that I think she can make $100,000 a year going to thrift stores and garage sales. That's cool. Easy, 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 easy. Easy. like easier than anybody would know. You did it last week on Snapchat with the You know, like it's, it's, and and by the way, books, books on Amazon, there's that dude who's a fan of mine he's, who claims he's making, right, 600,000. Like, he's probably hit your radar maybe here and there. Like, I don't know, there's some guy, if you see him on YouTube, he's made like 600,000 selling books last year. He went all in. 
Just goes to every thrift store, takes his fucking phone out, scans every fucking book, sees the velocity, so it means they'll sell, because you, you don't want to get caught with inventory. Has a feel for how, if it will actually sell, and then he sees it sells for $23 on average, and it's a dollar at the fucking Goodwill, and he buys it. Boom. And he did it at scale. Because if you work 18 hours, some people can't. Three, like I get it, which is why I don't judge. I walked to Kmart to buy shit for $4 with my mom. Like, I've got context, I know. And guess what, I don't even really know because both my parents lost a parent before they were 15. Like I've had it good for my humble beginnings. Who am I? I'm not judging anybody, but I'm not gonna make it convenient for you either. That's what I believe because I know who buys that shit. Do you understand? Yeah. And that fucking hurts me too. I'm just not gonna pick you over the other person. Just not. So. By the way, people can say anything they want and do anything they want and they should, but that is my truth. And you're right, you don't need to be the player to be the coach. That's only one of the 40 things that sit on my head. No, but I agree with you, yeah. I mean, you gotta be well, 100% believing what you sell. But, yeah. but, I, I have the luxury to believe in what I sell. Like I said, I would steal food faster than you could blink if I had to, for my kids, if I had no money. And I would, I swear to God I would. Steal. I didn't say go in the garbage and take food. I would do that too. But steal too. Life is life. E-commerce. We talk e-commerce. Of course we do. We talk anything. I mean, listen, I'm willing to talk. Uh, we can talk podcast, anything. That's all I talk about is e-commerce, Amazon and eBay and all that jazz, right? So I get people reaching out to me all the time with these new uh, new venues trying to sell. Yes. How do, you, how do you figure out which one has the legs? You know, all these, these, these new platforms coming out. Amazon... You know, that big. And eBay and Etsy and all the rest of them. But there's other ones coming up. How do you figure out which one has legs? I just do them because all. Because we have I, I to do them invest all. I get it. so much energy and effort to bring a, mar- bring a product to market in those marketplaces. Of course. That's, That's the, the punchline. That's the hard Think about how Nobody lucky you do. have. Think about yeah. how lucky no, you. Right. No, no, let's play it out. And I know you know. But let's play it out because I want everybody to hear this. Think about how lucky we have it that we're doing it yeah. digital. Because the real estate version of this is which beachfront property do you think is going to work? But if I told you if you had enough money, if you bet on 10 of them, all you need is one of them and you'll make all your money back and then some. So put them on all 10. But you know what? I know that Peach and I know that Anchor are out there and you guys have seen me. I'll say something about Anchor. I'll taste it for a second. I haven't done anything on Anchor for fucking four, nine months, right? Figure out a version where you put in the work to actually taste it but you don't go so over committed. Got it? You gotta find that right balance. It's, it's about risk. I'm nev- Do you know what my number one asset is? Let me think. No fear? Um, yeah, I think, well, I mean, the argument My asset. You don't give a shit. No, no, my number one asset, not my number one skill. What? You know yourself. You know yourself. Time. Time. Time is my asset, right? It's time. And then I do all this stuff on these platforms on spec. Got it? Do you know how much easier it is to, for me to write the $50,000 check that I gave away to the nonprofit in Canada, right? I got so many emails about that. I'm such a great guy. No, I'm not. That's the easiest nonprofit work I do. That fucking three hour fucking meeting I have to do with Pencils of Promise each month, that fucking blows. <laughs> Time. What's the uh, most exciting that Misha is 100% got a shot to have a bigger audience than me in about two years. Because <laughs> she's gonna be the nine-year-old girl version of me deployed against singing and entertainment. I'm really in a good zone right now, bro. Like the most exciting thing is I've gotten to a really tight zone around health, family, and business, and it's tight. Oof. Yeah, it's going right. You know, like really tight, you know? Real tight. More family time than ever working harder and stronger than ever and feeling better than ever. So, so, so it's gonna play itself out. And don't forget, Lizzie married me. So it's not like she's foreign to it or scared of it, you know what I mean? So Lizzie's super capable with that. Now the difference is supporting, a, at the time, a 30-year-old male's version into that game versus a nine-year-old girl's version is very different. So 
different dynamics, right? Like, you, you're getting the theme of this talk, for me at least, is like, it's just so many details, you know? Like, it'll be, there'll be a million variables there. Like, most of Misha's friends are on Musical.ly and she's not. I mean, that's the irony of it all, isn't it? Why is she not? Because Lizzie doesn't want her on there. And that's what I deal with the kids. I deal with the dynamic between the parent not allowing it. And the frustration between the kid having social dynamic differences because of the change. It's real stuff out there. But there always has been. Do you know how scared I was that Russia was going to drop a nuclear bomb on America when I was in third grade? Mm-hmm. I thought about it every day of my life. I swear to God. So at least something to be scared of. I'm just not scared because I'm just the most practical. More people will die in America this year by being struck by lightning than terrorism. I know, I know it's true. It's just data. It's not super hard. It's not convenient or interesting or a fun thing to say. It's the truth. It's just, it's not even that, it's just like, but nobody, like, I mean, I, don't, I mean, there's an entire, gen, there's, there's fucking 100 million people walking around America scared of terrorism, like fearful, scared. My mother-in-law is scared shitless. It's more dangerous crossing the road coming across. Especially the way I do it, I don't even look. It's a rationality, what you say. Daily, the, I think it was, it was 80, the live, the live stream, what was that last week? 80, the long one? Yeah. So one of my favorites, well the favorite, well actually Salty B was my favorite. <laughs> yeah, with the whole tongue at the end, I don't know what that was all about. But, uh, the, there was a, a meeting you were in and I've been thinking about it since and you, you got on this little rant with him about the hamster wheel? The hamster wheel mm-hmm. and how you close the door and you go to Mars and you never come back. And by the way, the only, re- like, like just real quick because I don't know if you caught it. I said it before he said it because I just listen to what people feel. Like you know, it's so interesting. Go ahead. You slam the doors, you go to Mars, you never come back, you, you would wish that on no one, ever. Because it's so scary. But, I, but what I'm trying to figure out was what, what, did, you, what, what did that mean? What did that mean? What talking about? When you are so pot commit, I care about capitalism and meritocracy and the game more than I care about myself. And that is crazy shit. And I, don't, I really don't see it. And I, only because I haven't gotten close to it or been figured out how to see it in others but it is a different thing. When you get to that level of selflessness, it's a vulnerability that is so extreme and it just, it's so, I mean, I just think I'm cut out for it and I don't wanna force my audience into it because their behavior probably hasn't been their whole life to be in it, got it? Like it's crazy to be four foot eleven your freshman year of high school and still think you're the best looking, most popular. <laughs> like, like to be against the market is ins- my life is playing against the market. It's just something happened in the way that the world works that is working very much in my favor, but wouldn't have thirty years ago. The market was closed thirty years ago. When you were at Icon, you talk, it, huge breakthrough for me. You already know it's a breakthrough. You know the stuff you say makes a difference in people's lives. But you were talking about, what you talked about earlier, that, that you're in the long game. You're not in it for the short term, make a sale right here, but you're in it. For yeah, that was an game. interesting vibe I took at that conference because I knew there was a lot of sales people. Yeah. And I was coming with marketing. Yeah. Go ahead. It was right on <laughs> yeah. for where, it, it was right on for where I was at in particular because I was in the, in the middle of capitalizing on everything that I know and putting it in a way that I could scale the things that I'm best at, right? The things that I'm good at. And I kept thinking like, I can't be here, I can't be there, but if I'm in front of people, that's when I'm at my best. And so when you started talking about, look, I'm not in it for the short thing. I want to do a product, you, like you said here, I want to do it, but I'm not ready to do it yet because I haven't figured it out yet. And so this isn't so much more of a question other than, I would just like to hear you talk a little bit more about whatever's on the top of your brain night, right now in regards to your personal brand, what you think about each day when it comes to that, and I don't know, however you've evolved since that time, because that was powerful. It was always Changed there. The I've been able to start articulating, you know, it's really interesting, even my early business talks, if you dug up some of those things, like I wasn't so, in, like I, I wasn't there yet. Like I just, you know, you learn from experience, like I, I mean, it's, it's one move. Where's the attention? How do I create for that medium? Deploy the message. 
at scale. One person scale. Everyday work. Everyday work. You know? That's it, man. It's really. Do you think about that or is it? I think about that. Yeah. And nothing else. And not my Facebook data. And not my followers. My self esteem is not wrapped up in my 604,000 Instagram followers. Because there's some dude with awesome abs that has 900,000. <laughs> like that's just not a smart game. So it really, honestly. I'm the most basic thing you've ever seen. Your central thought is I'll just be me and I'll be damn good at doing it. Because I'm damn good at business and marketing and selling stuff and all like, because I'm good at that. Again, I keep saying it and it's funny. It's this whole thing that I'm fast. It's why I'm like, oh wait a minute, I can do this forever. Because nobody believes me. Yeah. You know, like I built a business, a real business before I started talking. And it was against odds. $3 $3 million, I love when people razz me on social and say, but his dad gave him a $3 million. A $3 million business that does 10% gross profit, which is 300000 before expenses, is not some fucking war chest. Thank you, business people. Do you know what I mean? You know, you know what I mean? Like, there's a ton of people here making way more. There was no, it was like, and to build that from three to 60 million in five years took crazy talent as a kid. I didn't learn that at Wharton. And I didn't learn it by reading Purple Cow. I learned it because I'm the best, naturally. And now I'm just learning how to like, now I'm just playing for legacy. Where's the online attention of executives? Like middle and high LinkedIn. Facebook. So um, with that said. Not just black and white tactics, you know? Those two yeah, places. It's really interesting because I, I Obviously, we think LinkedIn, but uh, we're getting more from Facebook, more scale. And I, I'm sure you've given your version. Real quick, I apologize, but you just might be a better basketball player than you are a wiffle ball player. Yeah. You just might not be good at LinkedIn. Good at cricket. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> your rugby skills are better than your cricket skills. Yeah. Um, what is your definition of? an entrepreneur because I know nowadays everyone Nobody likes my definition. I always get pushback on this. Just somebody who's never worked for anybody else in their lives. I mean, the purest bred entrepreneur couldn't breathe with any other thing. I barely, barely walked into my family business where my dad gave me the complete control of the company right away. But, But that's just mine. Like that's not, like a lot of people really hate when I go here and I get a lot of pushback and I respect that because it's cool to be an entrepreneur now. So everybody wants to think they are. You're not if you work at Pepsi. I don't know how to cut it. This is like when I got, there was that one talk with me and Casey on that Q&A and the, and the person asked like, do you think there's a difference between men and women? And I said yes and people got mad. I'm like, how, how is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think there's some differences. I didn't say one was better than the other or this and that. I'm always laughing about that. Like, I don't know, maybe you don't like me saying it but this is what, I know enough about school that you can go and look up a definition and I haven't seen the definition of an entrepreneur that maps to the person that works at Microsoft right now and claims they're an entrepreneur. Thank you. But Tyler, take care of these other steps. Well, again, I, you know, I just think that, you know, it, I really don't, I do tell you, I do say it. I also don't think it really, like I don't think my opinion matters any more than anybody else's. I think my results are gonna be different. I think that will give it clout over time. But I'm not super worried about it. I'm super worried about, I realize that there's something I'm doing that's right. I understand those things. And I hope that they can be a blueprint that is not copied, but understood contextually to yourself and you can get the benefits from it. That may be the benefits that you may need from it. Too many people want people to emulate them, I don't. Because I know all the weird variables that come along with me. I just want you to be able to understand it, understand yourself, and then deploy it. Both. It sells the living shit out of stuff. Wrong. 
buy stuff all day long. Billions of dollars of selling. Billions this year. Most people don't know how to do it because they're trying to deploy Google AdWords DNA against Facebook. You have a bunch of sellers coming to a marketing platform. You're welcome. To continue on the social media. Um, yep. You were very good at predicting Twitter and all those things. I'm really good at talking about it loudly when I've decided it's already won. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> what, what's on your head right now? Pass musically. Not much. Marco Polo is an interesting communication tool. Um, after school, I invested in a company called One. He pivoted. It's called After School now. It's doing well in high school. Not much. You know what's fun? You know what I've done really well? I haven't forced it. A lot of futurists or pundits say shit because they need another headline. Mm-hmm. I can be comfortable if I never have another one again. Got it? That's the biggest difference between me and everybody who else out there that people think are me. Mm-hmm. They're they, to they're trying, do you see how many people said I told you so about Vine? Mm-hmm. The fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I made millions of dollars because of Vine. <laughs> That's like saying I told you that Empire was gonna eventually get canceled. No shit, dick. <laughs> Hey. Sorry. Good to make it, man. How are you? Let's get him a chair. Yeah. Like. Could you de- uh, go get, get a different angle? A, could you deploy this machine on a Yes. On a product yes. And yes. A yeah. Not only can I, do you notice how I tried to jump in quick? Yeah. I can deploy this machine against changing America's opinion about Beyonce. I get it. And I promise you, I want the $40 trillion of, of valuation that my SaaS product would get. I just really want to feel good about it. I really do. Honey Empire, you know? Two very big contradictions. But, like, look, if you want results that are anomaly, you have to act like one. I've said that or a version of that. That's what's happening. I'm pumped about this, man. I really hope I can live a long life. You know, I watched a movie, which is rare. <laughs> I went to Helsinki and got all my work done. So one, the, the Europe, I've literally watched seven movies in the last two years and they've all been Europe back to America flights because of the way it works out where I get my work done, I get a good night's sleep, I get on a plane, I have seven hours, I get two hours of the catch up of the shit I missed overnight and then I have this window and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and, no, and, and no Wi-Fi. It's a complete like, you know? So I watched this movie. Did you guys see the movie of the Indian mathematician who dies? No. <laughs> <laughs> you did, D-Rock? Yeah, I saw it on the flight. You did? From Helsinki? No, I wasn't oh. there. So there's just like some, all, yes. On the way to So some all-time great mathematician that's in Oxford or whatever, you know, and, but he passed away at 32. That's probably the thing that's most on my mind right now. Like, fuck man, I have to do this for me and humanity. <laughs> like, that's how big of an ego I have. To stay alive for a long time so I can see this through. I know I'm onto something so fundamentally different and I know that I can inspire people to do it because it's gonna have the empire part too. See, that's what people don't get. The reason I'm gonna win is because I've got both. The honey part means that you wanna go change the world. The empire part means you'll do it at all costs. I'm neither. It's cool. It's really interesting because when I buy the Jets, there's gonna be a lot of nice people that are 13 that are gonna think they can build a nice big business thing, do it the right way. I'm gonna redefine what an entrepreneur and business person is thought of. I think I can do it. Yeah, I think so. I think it's really different. That's why I'm dangerous. All the people that I'm not as pumped with online, watches, this and that, selling stuff, they're scared of me because I'm better at their shtick than they are. So I'm dangerous. It's fucking fun. Do you have mini goals set up in- Let me get the guy behind you real quick because he's been so awesomely patient. (laughs) Short backstory, basic question. First year of ramen noodles, running on a gear, still just ramble. 
last two years, a lot of success, 16 to 18 hour days, and my dream is not that big. It's five to seven people all on the crew doing bigger than what I can alone. Love it. How do I keep the momentum and still get the entire <laughs> By I love it and I keep going the entire By time. E- eating Roman noo- uh, by eating ramen noodles longer. You know, give up more money for yourself and give them to people. The 167 that I just talked about. I did it, man. All my friends. I built Wine Library from a three to a $30 million business and it got none of the fruits that of a 26-year-old dude would love to take advantage of. Didn't even fucking step into New York City. You know? Instead of paying myself 280, I hired Ray Prado. Miss you, Ray. You know? You know what's cool about my answer? It's the only true answer to your question. Either you work and you're tired, so you can keep more of the money, or you don't have the fruits that come along with a little more money. And the fruits are very basic, right? It's not like you went from that to like caviar every night. It's just whatever is a little bit better, but you can get you get very used to that better than before, and it stops you. This stuff is so basic. It's basic. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. We're not wired for it. We want stuff now. I just don't. What's up? That's a great question. Wine's been a very interesting journey for me because I'm not in the business anymore. I like it again. It's so fun. Like I'm a customer again. I actually I'm a customer for the first time in my life. To answer your question, weird shit. Like it's so crazy. Literally, it blows me away that I'm gonna say this. This is actually very non-nerdy, very I'm like embarrassed in my wine self, I'm really hot on oaked Chardonnays, the thing that I made fun of for 10 years on Wine Library TV. <laughs> but that's just a palate chen- change, you know? It's like, like I grew up my whole life not li- liking chocolate and liking like the other kind of candy and now I'm the reverse. Palates are, you too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't even know when it happened. Pregnant, yeah, <laughs> not, not me. Um, so, uh, oaked Chardonnays, uh, a lot of Piedmont wines, a lot of Barolos. I think that's the next category to pop, like the way Burgundy did, low production Barolo. I brought some from uh, Finger Lakes for you. Love it, man. Riesling? Yeah. Awesome. I'd l- thank you so much. It's very nice. Let's keep it going. So, um, I love the document don't create message. Mm-hmm. That, time. that was a big game change. As a matter of fact, D-Rock, we, we're doing a bad job building on that momentum. We need to do much more content about that. That has been a game-changing piece of content for a lot of people. It was tricky because I'm a creative director. Yes, you are. <laughs> so I was like, hmm, how do I not create and perfect? And I know you're just like, ship it, get it up. I mean, early Wine Library TV is. And that helps. That They're hearing well. When I saw you in the hallway. And yeah. Like, Will you do a Yiddish video with me? Like, boom. Just to do that. And you know what's so interesting about that? And you know me. If it wasn't that, it had no chance. Oh, sure. Like, you know? Yeah. Like, like, uh, do you know how desperate I am to go into that club and do the reading for you? It's just time. Oh, I, I can't it. win. No, but you did it fast and we did it. I loved it. And it's a really interesting insight for you. Big time. Because you lived it with me. You wanted me to go and do that event. You know, we have a great little rapport with each other. I desperately want to. I said I would. I never like to go back on my word. It destroys me. Uh, but, but, and then that, you know, it's so, in, that's interesting. Doing, doing is the only fucking game. Yeah, I mean, and I love it because I got to see a little bit more into you because you, I think you're so incredibly generous and kind, but when you started talking about your grandmother, it just, like, everything sort of melted away. You were so happy. And it really, And I don't forget, this I is this, and you know what's happened. interesting about it? That's the grandmother that I actually have publicly said multiple times is not a very nice person. Well, I believe it. <laughs> but, my, because we're, but where you went there is, where it went for me is my grandma represents the bigger thing. Mm-hmm. Which is, uh, <laughs> and I even get emotional about it and I never do as you guys know. 
this group of 13 characters that came to this country with nothing. Zero. Like zero. Zero, a hundred dollars, because we sold our shit in Italy while we're waiting to get to this country. It was supposed to be paved with gold, but oh wait, it's the late 70s and it's a re- recession time. Fucking grinded. For, for, like forever. Like these kids that are like, ugh. Like kids that grow up in good families and are, don't want to grind for a year before they want shit. This was 20 years of building some, you know, I just, I just dismissed a $3 million business doing 300, like, right? Even the tone that I brought it with, that took my dad his whole life to get to that point. Because that's what you do when you have zero. How dare I do that? He had zero. How do kids do kids grinding? You don't. It reminded me a lot. I'll get back to that. My grandmother? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I am a very patient person, and I have been building this live storytelling show and podcast, and now we're starting to do storytelling workshops. I've talked to Steve and Claude here about doing them here as well. Um, and I have started talking to local partners about how we can work together. And my, with some of these partners, their social media numbers are just like off the charts compared to mine. And I know for the podcast, in order to interest advertisers, that you need to have a certain number of listeners and downloads and all that. I don't believe that, by the way. Okay. I believe that that's the way the majority of the market does it. I think that if you're a really good salesperson, did you ever see the video where I cold called somebody? I saw that. I I think you could, I think, so you're so understanding of this industry, Uh that's that's your break. I think you should spend an hour a day cold calling, Mm -hmm. cold pitching a sponsorship deal Mm -hmm. on your podcast, that makes no mathematical sense. Well, it's like a local, so I make ice cream cakes for this show that I do, and there's a local place who is blowing up right now, and they're very interested, we've had. Yeah, but I would go to Ben and Jerry's and just see if you can get them there. They're about to be as big as Ben and Jerry's. But they're not. But they're selling it to us now, too. But they don't have a $100,000 sponsorship check for you. Mm -hmm. Right. So then I'm wondering like what, I, I have a lot to offer them, but I just wonder like how do I sort of. You ask them. <laughs> See, well, let's. Well no, I'm, I have, obviously have no problem asking. I, wouldn't I know. Like when I first met you. So you go asked. ask them. Then I have to figure out all the numbers and what we need and all that. Kind of don't stuff. sell on numbers, you don't have them. But not only that, that's just the, that's the, that's the module to get there. Never sell on your weakness. You shouldn't figure out any numbers. You don't have them. No, no. And what, what got people excited about it, at least locally, is like my enthusiasm I talked. I mean, I had an hour long meeting. That I'm, I know you. Me. You better sell that. Can you do for yourself what you just did for her? What's that? Mm-hmm. Most of us in this room can't see the forest for the trees when it comes to our right. own stuff. Okay. But somebody else can, I can sit here and yeah. listen to anybody and they could do the same for me. Can you do that for yourself? I think that's what I did. That's what I think I do best. Where, where does that come from? Is that who I, you are? Yeah, I think yeah. so. You know, that's actually what I do. That's why I'm so good at what I do. I'm looking at me right now just like you were looking at me. And that talent has been huge for me. How often do That's self-awareness, really, or a version of it. How often do they call you out and say, you're not, you don't see the forest, these are just the trees. Do they ever? What does that look like? I, I don't even know if they do or they don't. It's like literally white noise. There's no executive here or out there that can possibly penetrate. They just can't. I haven't listened to anybody my whole life. Is that why your dad can let you take charge of his company? Probably. You're probably, you know what's so funny? I swear to God, I've never thought of this. Maybe I just took it. Maybe he didn't give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being dead serious. You know, I actually am gonna ask, like, you might just be right about that. Maybe he didn't, and the truth is, knowing my dad, he probably definitely didn't, <laughs> you know? There, no question there's some of that. There was, maybe my dad, t- you know, I was razzing him as EQ, maybe he understood there was no other option. Either that's what it was gonna be, or I was gonna go garage sale until, I was willing to do anything. I really struggled entering my dad's business. I didn't want that comment on YouTube about the three million. I didn't want it because I know I didn't need it because I knew it wasn't that much. 
Best place you've traveled outside the United States? Turks and Caicos. And I think the reason that, <laughs> and I think the reason that is, I've thought about this, so that's why I was able to answer and give you the follow up, is just really hardcore fond family moments. You know, me and Lizzie by ourselves, the kids, one trip with my parents, it just, Mike Lazaro, founder of Buddy Media, had a place, like, just real families, like, re- yeah, Turks. I got engaged there two years ago, it was amazing. <laughs> um, quick question, I mean, the wedding industry, Grew up in the business, took it almost from my father, you know, kind of gave yep. took it. Same yeah, kind of yeah. Um, because he had no choice, right? It was kind of that dynamic. But the question I have now is that in the entertainment world, we do mostly weddings. And so within the wedding industry, everybody's a small business, small photographer, small DJ, small florist, everybody's small. What I've done now is I've signed a 10 year lease to build what's going to be called the wedding establishment and I vertically integrated to create all these small businesses under my name under one roof. The question I have You want to be Vince McMahon? Kind of. I want to be Gary Vaynerchuk. But the, the thing is reverse engineering it and if I say in 10 years I do want to sell it at, you know from 7 to 10 million or whatever the fact of the matter is that the small businesses in the, in the wedding industry they just don't have that kind of money. Where would I go to sell something at that level. So one thing, one thing um, that people are confused by is who might buy something in business? Unlimited people. First of all, you worry about building a business that's profitable, you can sell it. I mean, what do you think New York City's built on? It's banking. It's, you have a business that's profitable, you can sell it. I'll buy it. Because I'll look at it and be like, I can do that better and I'll buy it at what he's got it at and I'll run it through my machine and it'll be worth a lot more. Vayner, Vayner wedding? <laughs> Interested. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no, That's okay. a really silly, th- I, um, you know, and by the way, I say a lot of silly things in the world that I don't come from. Right. That's an unbelievably silly question. If oh, you have a, pr- right. if you, cause you're thinking so micro. Dude. But I only say that because of the- You could sell it to the guy in town that's so impressed who wants to buy a business for his loser son. But the, the thing is, it's a, it's a wedding and there's no... I don't even understand what you're saying. <laughs> okay. You are so microed out. Okay. I, I get it. Okay, I get it. You should get it. There's private equity, there's banks, there's rich people who have loser sons, there's, <laughs> there's a wedding company that you never heard of that's gonna become the Uber of weddings that wants it. There's... You have kids? You have a 15 year old? 15 year old. I followed. I followed. Them? Like, there's a million different things yeah. that can happen. No, I guess you're, that, you're getting way like too. We, we get caught yeah, you're caught thing. so deep. You're, you, I, I want to razz you because I could see so you could take it. You're so deep in it, it makes no sense. I just think. You've over. You, period. Right. You just thought yeah. way too much. Sorry. No, but you know what I mean? No, no, no. Yeah. It makes sense. That's no problem. Build a business. Everything else will be fine. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a that's. I'm just pumped for you. That's why I'm razzing because that's the, not a problem at all. Okay. Cashing out is not a problem when you have something that's good. Hey, um, Isaiah, one more here. Isaiah, when you tell me this thing takes about three and a half years old now, and um, the biggest issue we seem to have is we have minimum wage employees. Yes. Kind of recruiting them and training them. Yes. Um, I sure do. Do you talk to them? Yeah. Do you really know what they care and like? Uh, yeah, I feel like I do. Yeah. Well, then you should have no problem. Even with recruiting, like just I, what I found is just go through loads and loads and loads of different people, and just you find like one or two. It's really difficult to find those people who are gonna for those who are like kind of a lower wage. How are you making that decision when you go through loads and loads of people to find that one diamond in the rough? Um, You're overestimating your gut. I think I have the greatest gut of all time. I hire everybody. (laughs) You passed on the 10 best employees you could have ever had. Got it? Mm -hmm. Got to build scalability in unscalable things. That's where I think, you know, that's as I'm thinking about it, like that's where I get it. Like I, I do unscalable things, but everything I do about that is scaled. Like it's kind of interesting that way. Oh, let, 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 let's go ahead and then we'll go there. You got some? Culture's number one. What's your number two? Culture's number one. Yeah. 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 Culture's number
culture. <laughs> I mean, and then the other thing that matters is running good business, right? But culture's number two. Yeah, it's so big. I mean, I'm in the people business. The hell am I doing here? But I did that with Wine Library too, even though we sold wine, because you're always in the people business. What's that? Oh, yes. You can't fake environment. You can't, you can't fake environment. My kids are gonna grow up on the Upper East Side, go to private schools, have friends that are on the Aspen ski team but they live in New York because they take a private plane after school on Thursday and go to Aspen. This is real. I'm gonna be ridiculously famous and wealthy. Like, I'm not gonna be able to fake environment. I need to teach them truths. But are they gonna be as hungry as I am? Unlikely, maybe. Maybe it's just a hardcore DNA thing and they were able to overpower environment. Maybe they look at my mountain and say, fuck you dad, I'm gonna climb it. Like I did. Because Jesus Christ, my dad seemed really successful to me because that was my context. I didn't know about the Zucks or you know Bill Gates. Like, I didn't think about that. So you just can't fake environment though. And that's why I always laugh at all these rich parents because they try. And those are tactics. We're gonna send them to a camp in Maine this summer that doesn't have air conditioning. Oh yeah, Johnny's really gonna be hungry. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? All right, hold on one second. Let me get in here and I'll come back. Cave? 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 Cave. Cave's a middle school? Middle school principal. Oh, damn. But <laughs> respect. Go ahead. If you ran your own middle school, what's the first class you would drop? That's a great question. I would drop, first class I would drop, I would drop, fuck, it's interesting. I respect and disrespect them all equally in some weird way. <laughs> uh, I, would, I would audit every kid, one by one, figure out what they were weakest at and make them drop that and then make them double down on what I thought they were strongest at. That's the game. How do you, I'll come back to you next time. Because I think I'm better than them. That's a, tr- that's a really tough thing to even say out loud. <laughs> but it's the truth to your question. I just do. It's so crazy. It's, um, I'm re- you know, back to the SaaS product, I'm, I'm sitting on this perfectly parented because I know it could be all time. But I've got to really give it my all. I can half-ass crush it and it's going to be a monster and real valuable but I've got to really, really drill this perfectly parented because it could be all time. Like all time. Like, well, Bible, perfectly, <laughs> perfectly parented. Spring 2017, don't listen to your parents do that. Is that right? Yeah, I love, it. love it. I think I can write it better. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, the truth is, and you know, like nothing we do, nothing, like all this stuff has been said and then that's, those are, you know what I mean? Love that. And I believe that, but like, like everybody's got their version of it. And I feel like deep in my soul I got a good one in me. I can't wait to, but that's awesome, man. I love that shit. All right. This is from Matthew. What's the next big advertising platform you see coming? Twitter is struggling. Reddit just came out with interest-based ads. And Snap is teaming up with ad platforms. Facebook ad costs are going up. I'm trying to see down the road. I don't know. I think Facebook is grossly underpriced. I think influencers are grossly underpriced. I'm not worried about who's doing what next. I just don't have a, I have zero interest in what's next. I only care about what's now. It doesn't matter. It'll matter when it happens. And that's what you tell your clients? A hundred percent. I don't sell, VaynerMedia doesn't sell the future. VaynerMedia sells the now. It feels like the future when you do television and direct mail and outdoor. (laughs) I sell the now, always have, most practical guy in the room, don't have the personality that feels practical and most people don't think it's practical because everybody plays in the past. Because the past is for average players. The data. Data told you what happened, not where it's going. Big data is a farce. You have to interpret it and make a decision. Such a huge underutilized platform, like traction channel for a company. Like, why, why 
I really don't. It's not what we're being hired for. Vayner Talent might be interesting. We may have a CEO from Hewlett Packard that wants to, like, so, not. Yeah, and, well, and they don't care. I mean, do you know how many people make $91 million a year that you've never heard of? I do, but do you know how many people are introverted, not interesting, don't like people, bad dudes? I agree. I tell them every day. They can find me. You know what I mean? It's out there. I believe in it. I talk, you know, but like, yeah. Yes, I do. I think they should. It's just not. You're right. <laughs> it's just not, I'm not, I'm just not interested in convincing anybody to do anything. Kind of, I have this weird non-sell thing, you know? I just viscerally hate to sell. People don't get it. Is it because you're so good at it? No, I wish that was it, that's cool. That's a cool, I, I, I may just take that because it's cool. <laughs> no, because I don't like it. It's a manipulation? No, it's like, I just don't want anybody to have the leverage and if you're asking, the other person has the leverage. You know? So I just sell on having it come to me. So if a CEO emailed me and said, hey, I want to build my personal brand, I'm thrilled to have that conversation. But I'm not going to tweet you and be like, hey, Rick. (laughs) You know? Cool. Kelly Kelly. Kelly Kelly. You're selling the wrong people, Kelly Kelly. Find the ones that are sellable. That's just it. I mean, I'm sure as people have gone down my rabbit hole, the thing that's probably most interesting is two things I think I'm asking you guys actually. One, how historically correct I was. And two, how very little has really changed in my message over the last decade. And that's it. I don't think you should sell people that aren't sellable to. You should find every person that believes in e-com instead of convincing people. Do you know how many people believe in e-com that you haven't talked to yet? All of them. All of them. Right. To spend one minute on trying to convince somebody that believes in something else, e-com is not smart. It's bad strategy. Text messaging. So we're here. This is the ultimate. Access is the ultimate thing, right? The explosion of messaging apps, WhatsApp, messages, Snapchat, all that stuff. How can you leverage that without sacrificing your sanity and all your time? Do you, do you even think about that? What do you mean? So there's a guy right now. Mm-hmm. He's got, he started a, I don't see anybody doing anything like this at all. He started Rather than doing a Facebook group, he says, I'm going to do a Facebook chat. Now, it, it's, it's annoying because I'm always getting notifications popping up, but I see... Let's stop there. Yeah. That's going to play itself out. His thing is going to play itself out. For you, because the first word out of your mouth is it's annoying. <laughs> so you're valuing it as a marketer because you're seeing it a lot, but seeing it and consuming it, seeing it, consuming it, and acting on it are two very different things. So let me set it up. Go ahead. I get energized by my students contacting me. Mm. And te- just like you get energized, mm-hmm. I'm telling you, man, I did, I did what you said it, it worked. Um, I mean, the amount of time, I mean, you guys remember, I for a few minutes tested VChat, like, like a little fake little app, like, go ahead. I get energized by that yeah. stuff, but I cannot scale that. I've got 30 students now, right? But when I have 300, there's no way that I can make that happen unless I have them pay for that access, right? So that's one avenue, but is, but is there a... You're looking for the scalable version? What, are you gonna sell your message app that can no. answer the questions for nineteen ninety nine? No, no, okay. I'm looking to charge, I'm looking to charge myself up, but I don't know how to do, and messaging is an amazing way to Give them it. your cell number. <laughs> I just think that, Text messaging is so huge, but I don't see anybody effectively scaling it. Okay. I gotta, I gotta think about this a little bit more. Let's stay on it for a minute. 
either. You don't, you're not telling me the full story and it's not just about getting charged up, which is what I think. Or you are a person that needs to see somebody else do something to give you belief in it. Both are bad. So which one is it? There's probably a little bit of truth in the second one. Good. Right? Good. That's fine. And there's, by the way, nothing wrong with fast following. Yeah. It's, it's not as good as being the first one, but it's super fine. And if you're better at it, it's even better. So go ahead. But I, tr- I, I truly, I feel like my purpose yes. outside of being a father yes. is fulfilled. It, not not necessarily fulfilled, but I feel like I'm getting closer to realizing my purpose. Which is? To help people get unstuck from stupid things that prevent them from doing. So let me ask you a question. If yeah. that's your purpose, my friend, why don't you do it for free, like I do it, since it's my purpose too? Purpose? It's your purpose. Yeah. If it's free, you'll have more people. Now show me in your actions that it's actually your purpose. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's good. Because it's the truth. Your purpose doesn't come with an asterisk attached for four ninety nine a month. Not your purpose. Your business does. Yeah. But please don't bullshit me the difference between your business and your purpose. Do you know how much I could charge for what we're doing here right now? A lot more than the fucking three cock, what was it, three, four? <laughs> yeah. Is it your purpose? Because if it is, do it for free and give everybody your fucking cell phone number. That's the realest shit, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's it. And by the way, it doesn't have to be your purpose. You're not Mother Teresa. I, she actually, every time I say that, people get mad. I guess she has a lot of controversy, so I gotta find somebody else. But, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Back to judging, you don't have to, but you can, you can have that conversation with a lot of people. I'm the worst guy to have that conversation with on earth because I have the most ability to charge and I'm the only one doing it for free at scale. Yeah. So you just walked into the wrong guy for that conversation. <laughs> well, but you know, but don't, go ahead. Don't you get annoyed with the yahoos who try to get your attention who aren't willing to do jack squat? I don't even know what you're talking about. That's how little I pay attention. Word. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know, you know? Yeah. I get worried because I know that that's happening and a lot of people are falling for it. I get mad at when people say to me, Gary, give me tactics, I'm giving it to them and then they're getting it for free for me and then paying somebody $4.99 for their Snapchat book and all that guy did was literally rip my content and put it into a PDF. I get mad at people's fucking stupidity and that's why I'm gonna systematically go one by one of those fucking hucksters and put them out of business (laughs) over a 50 year period by building the biggest fucking empire on honey to inspire other people to be like, wait a minute, you can do that? Yes, you can do that. You can do it by fulfilling your purpose and then selling something else. That's just different from everybody else. Just is. How are you my friend? You got one, Alex? Um, The first one, the second one's interesting. When you said, do I share the P&L with them? Yeah, what are the goals for the business and how much are you sharing with them? How do they know that they're being treated appropriately, I guess. I'm going through this with my business. Yeah. Um, Got it. That's an interesting question, man. So, this is where you, it's very hard, bro. This is where you go into the empire part. I don't think I need to open the books. I'm comfortable with like opening them if I felt like I had to. I don't trust the ability for 800 people to interpret it. I feel great about it because I don't know, it's gotten better for everybody and we're gonna make less money as a company this year so it'd be a good time for me to share it. You know, um, Appropriate is a one person game. I don't know if DRock feels like he's being appropriately you know, taken care of but I try to have that conversation. I try to be a kind of person that you could have that conversation with. Um, we, I mean there's a lot of people I've very much, I've had a couple of them this week that I viscerally disagree with. I feel like they're overcompensated. They feel like they're undercompensated. The good news in this scenario is I'm the judge and the jury as they are. 
they're more than welcome to go out to the universe. How often are you, how often are you auditing your goals and changing them? I only have one goal. I only have one goal. Stay in business yep. and build the capabilities to deploy against the future behaviors. Really. I mean, I don't know what to say. We literally flat out made less money this year at 100 than we did last year at 67. For a lot of people in this room, especially based on your questions, that would be disastrous. For me, it is phenomenal. You're just investing in people. What is the difference? Yeah, just investing. But you're asking a more interesting question, which is whoever you're worried about that disagrees with you that they're not getting comped properly, make a decision if you're willing to meet, reach those goals. It has more to do, you know, I, I am a follower mostly for the business sense that you bring to yeah. the table. I love the, what you talk about. Yeah. Employees. Yeah. I love what you did at Wine Library. Yeah. It means a lot. Yeah. Like for me as a business owner, new business owner. Yeah. That you invested in these people. Yeah. More than you invested in yourself. And I, I think That's that how you I, invest in yourself. Right. I think it is an investment in myself. Of course. I'm, I'm taking that long. But sometimes you can't afford stuff. But like I, if I, I gave everybody, I, if I gave everything everybody wanted here, we'd close tomorrow. No doubt about it. But I think being transparent sometimes gives them some perspective on how much I'm putting into it. Show them. That's, that's why I asked. Show them. I don't think people get it though. Like that's the biggest reason I probably would never share my books at scale is because if I decided that one in three years to make 17 million, I don't think my employee that makes 140,000 understands the difference between them and me. I did until I was a business owner. You got it. There's not an employee on earth that knows what it feels like. That was such a cool quote, that whole front, sign the front of the check versus the back of the check. That was super gangster, I like that. <laughs> like, they don't know. And, I don't, and by the way, they shouldn't know. You don't know until you do it. You could dream about what your first kiss is gonna be like. You just don't know what it is until you have it. You could, you, you figured it all, I figured out how to be a parent because I was 11 years older than AJ and when I was 18 and he was seven, I was really his parent, my ass. I fucking walked into Misha's fucking room every day the first six months just hoping she was still breathing. You know? You don't know. And what you don't know for sure is I thought, well after they're seven I'll feel better. I'm gonna be scared forever. So, are you scared forever in business? I'm never scared in business. Ever. Never have been, never will be. It's the thing I do. I, was, I genuinely believe that I'm LeBron and Beyonce. I genuinely believe that. What does scare you? Health and wellness of my family. Nothing else. Just, I mean, what else? Like, what else? And, and, I've, and I've gotten weirdly better at this. I used to be really scared of dying. I brought up tonight that I wanted to live long enough to see it through, but I'm less scared of dying, which I don't really fully understand yet. Might just be getting, I guess that's what happens, right? Like it was, it's the first time in my life I'm like, oh, that's why 87-year-old Rick is like, eh, I get it. That's kind of cool and different and interesting, but, but wait, but trends are changing and I want to be 120 and you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you want them to have empathy for you and what you're dealing with. I want them to know that I'm you want, into what you doing. want them to have empathy for you, as you should. You know what I mean? You want them to have compassion for what you're dealing with. They, you want them to know. I want them to know I'm telling you the truth. I know. I'm investing in the business. I'm investing. I know. You remember being the kid and not the parent? Remember being a kid? Sure. You can only get so far. You're only gonna believe your parents so much. Cause boy, I'll get to you my man. When you show them the books and then you find out that Kristen whispered to Tyler that you fudged the numbers, mm-hmm. your heart will break. Do you know that they don't believe me? Do you understand? Even the best agency you've ever seen, they don't believe me. They wait for every moment to not believe me. No, I think because they're jaded. They don't believe me. Because of the game. The kids believe me a hell of a lot more than the 30 and 40 and 50 year olds that have been burned by 17 other agencies. 
Experience is what fucks you up. I just know what you're in for. I've been there. If you want the good stuff, it comes with a lot of bad stuff. I love it all. Me too. That isn't the punchline. The punchline is, are you giving them what they want on a one-to-one basis? By the way, a lot of times it isn't money. No, I know that. Good. Whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. Tickets to a baseball game, a vacation, an acknowledgement. There's just a billion different variables. Spend a lot more time worrying about Susan and Rick and less about the thesis behind what you're thinking about and it will work itself out. See where I'm going? That's the winner. How many employees you got? How often have you gone to dinner one by one with the five? That's insane. That's the answer. That's where your problem is. Five, I wish. (laughs) Good. You know how you get to 500? By taking your five to dinner every fucking day. Really, you should really go to dinner one by, you and Rick, and you should go to dinner once every four to six months. And it should start with like, tell me the truth. I'm in a constant battle here to get them to believe me that I want to hear it. I'm not scared of anything they're gonna say. The fuck are they gonna say? That I'm wrong? I'm like, good, you go build it. Like, that I don't get it? I'm like, I promise you I get it. Because here's what I know. The ones that have left, they want to come back real bad. That's the punchline. You can't wonder what they think. You have to know what they think. Problem is, a lot of times you don't want to know what they think, whether you know it consciously or subconsciously. Ireland. Uh, What's your name, my friend? David. Real pleasure. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Um, Are you guys gonna hang out with each other after I leave? I think we should. I think people should. By the way, I recommend like smaller groups. You try to boil the ocean, it won't be as good. Um, I'm in the health and fitness industry, and uh, across we have nine different Facebook pages. Okay. And across the nine pages, we have about 12 million followers. Okay. And we're sending 500,000 clicks a day to fitness articles. Um, well, I kind of want to set up a personal brand as well. How would you, what would be the first step you would take? What do you zero, want? Zero personal brand. You have zero personal brand? Yeah. And, you want to build like, your, and you want to build your personal brand? Yeah, so like, and what do you want to talk about? I'm not really sure yet. I'm not sure on that. You better figure that out, you know? And I don't mean like tactically, especially from a guy who's behind a tactic-based business. You need to think higher up what you want to talk about, then talk about it, and then use the distribution channels to bring awareness to it. Don't forget, I was the wine guy. And then I started talking about business content and nobody wanted me to. They said stick to wine, wine guy. Right? Got it? So you could talk about flying kites. I would still use your scaled reach of the other channels because some people are into fitness and kites. Start with like a set up a personal website, or would you like start with social media, like set up an Instagram? And both. Start to that? Both. All of it. I, I, thank you for Crush It and for all your, all your stuff. Changed my life, literally. Uh, awesome. I, I'm, Did Crush It change your life? By the way, that's the punchline. Yeah. While I've got all of you, yeah. the book that I'm writing next is called Crushed It, Good. and the subtitle is How These. 44, 17, 92, people read Crush It and crushed it and how you can too. So anybody here who has not embellished, don't do me any favors because it'll hurt me if you're full of shit and we're gonna spend real time trying to figure out if you're full of shit and if you told me that Crush It changed your business and it didn't, then, then I'm really never gonna talk to you again. Um, but if you were affected by Crush It with tangible results, I wanna get those stories. Yeah, I'll, I'll, Please email me. Actually, 
Email Alex. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was good timing. I read it in like 2011, 2012. I, I created this product out of my family business. It's called Jason Steele. Uh, literally changed my life. That's it's, awesome. It's awesome. I, I had a blast doing it. My, my former life, I was a foodie, so I kind of combined. I love it. Both were spinning it off my family business. Um, I'm running into that scenario. Do I have an issue? I mean, the good news is I've created this product for, for consumers, right? It's, but it's one off. I'm going to sell you one. And, yeah. <laughs> right? It's good. Long-term problem. You either cre- you, you create an ancillary product mm-hmm. that figures out how to make the next step, mm-hmm. or you are happy with being the George Foreman grill. Okay. Okay. Or you do that, and you create something completely different and get your creative juices nut okay. off. Yep. All of them work. Yeah. You just have to be good at yeah. any one of those versions. And a lot of times, people fail in that second product because they use too much of what made their first product work in their second product without realizing the differences in the world from one to the other or the competitive landscape of the new one. Mm-hmm. Sure, that's great. Good. Yeah, and the content part is awesome. I want more of that. It's, it, it, you can't do it enough. I know, I listen, I mean, trust me, like, back to ambition and not, like, you will not believe how much I was like, fuck, man. I wish I wanted a five person. Like, I think that's awesome. Like, I'm not joking. Like, I'm convinced. Convinced, this is not even a debate, that I'll be 80 and be like, hmm, wish I wanted a little less, could have done a little more, like, I already do. I do now, I don't have to guess. I wish I would, I wish, I, this is not a joke and you're all gonna be like, no, don't. If a drug came out to siphon out ambition DNA, I would do it. I'm telling you why. Because exactly where I am now, I can settle into a four to $13 million a year life being just me, right, one book speak 140 times and be done. Still not siphon from you and be good. And fucking take my kids on these trips and fucking chill and not deal with the fucking fires I'm dealing with right now. I got a lot of them. I got five offices and 770 people. You didn't come to Sydney. I was just there. No, no, I was there as well. I, uh, oh actually, yes. I remember now, actually. That's so weird. That clicked for me a little bit. That was cool. I like how the brain works. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean office. Oh, office. Uh, there's going to be a real battle between Sydney and Singapore. That's, I'm fascinated to see how it plays out for VaynerMedia. I, I, I used to think Singapore was going to win. Now I think Sydney's going to win because I think we'll actually just go directly into China. We're going to have to. There's no other way to win in that market. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I love I love Australia. I mean, that that's that to me is such an easy market because I'm co- I'm cozy with it from the wine world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's it's um, I mean, my world is payroll in Australia, and we're like, it's terrible. This is being recorded because I'm about to tell you a secret, but it's so my business is so easy because I'm like in a um, a market that's twenty years behind everyone yeah. else. Yeah. By the way, by the way, all of the markets. <laughs> you didn't say anything crazy. Every market. I just thought I was you know, nope. Every All of them. <laughs> All the markets. That's the crazy part. If you actually deploy modern tactics against any business, it will work. You got anything? Well, everyone kind of had questions that were good. You put out a lot of content that's good. <laughs> but one thing, back to dads. My dad, I turned him on to your stuff uh, recently when I said I was coming here. He always says two out of ten people get it and the other eight don't. Do you believe that? I think the numbers are way worse. I think your dad's an awesome optimist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Definitely. I think the, I, and it, look, I mean, goes back to entrepreneur, like, what's the definition of get it? I think you got a good insight, as much as you know me, I'm pushing way harder than you think on the heady shit. Like, I'm way up there. Yeah. I'm just trying to stay down here because I don't want to get it, I want to keep it as practical as I can, but like, getting it to me is literally, my definition, care about nothing except the health of the people you love the most. Zero. Super interesting in theory. What a wild game to do in practice, like in real life and execute on, you know? I can't, sus- I can't sustain stress. How do you execute on that? I don't, you know, perspective, like just dictatorship around perspective. Like, if I had one employee, if that sounded better, and did a trillion, but if I bought the Jets, I've said this, I know some of you heard it, if I bought the Jets tomorrow, and I got a text 
that Xander got hit by a bus and died, what the fuck do you think I'm gonna do? You think I'm gonna be pumped about the Steelers game next week? I may never recover. The fuck's the matter with people? If all five of your employees hate you with their guts and are gonna leave tomorrow, I promise you that's way better than the person you love the most dying tomorrow. So I don't know, understand why one would, but we do not act like that. We do not act like that. We don't act like that. We don't act like that. And that's it. Now, when I put on my jersey, which is what I'm doing right now, when I'm in it, I'm in it. But it's like this fucking parallel, of like, like it's like the programs that run behind the scenes on your computer. Like, there's a parallel thing that's going on with me that's just always has that in mind. It doesn't take away from me wanting to destroy everybody and fucking deal with everybody and do my thing. I'm not, I'm not leaving anything on the field with you in these two hours, but it's running. You know? It's fucking running. The uh, email newsletter. It was the Hustler Digest, yeah. No, because I don't think there's anything I'm doing in that email that makes you think I'm, I'm personally sending you that email. Like when you signed up for it, it said it's an email newsletter that comes out once a week. I don't like when people try to use automation to trick you into thinking it's them. I was curious if you were gonna go down that path. Like, you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. I love automation. I don't like when automation is a front for actual. And I've done a bad job historically creating that clarity. I hope you got that one, d because that's needed out there. You see what I mean? That's all. I don't like the deceptiveness of like, oh, when I would say that story in my keynotes about like, then the emails came out with your name on it. They were trying to act like they wrote it. See where I'm going? That's all I have. I just came yeah. in the view. And no, yeah, the view is. Gary, I'm curious yeah. because what you just said and the conversation on scale, how many people here have got a, any platform because the attention game is you bump uh. in three different places. How about you have had a direct contact from Gary? You mean like a heart on Instagram and reply to email? Yeah. Facebook, yeah. Twitter, Snapchat. Yeah. Thank you. I watch it. Ty, get this person contact. Yeah. Yeah. I emailed. That's him. what's scary. I emailed. I emailed you, Gary about this whole thing. That he, I got one, yeah. and it was an email. I got my thing. What I think scary is that we don't do that in our businesses. And I run a brick and mortar for freaking ten years plus. I'm the busiest of all of you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that in our own business with our five. You know what's interesting? You know what's also interesting? When I say I'm the busiest of all of you and you made that face because you're hustling your ass off, the punchline isn't that I'm actually the busiest of it's just that I'm bu- so busy that whether, you know, whether I'm working 18 hours and three minutes and you're working 18 hours and four, the punchline is it can be done. The face was D2, what would happen if he was around 10 years ago? That's the hustle. That's the difference in the hustle. You know what's crazy? I work harder now than I did 10 years ago. Yeah, but what, would, what advice would you give yourself now, 10 years like from now, and when, they, when you look back, because you look back and you think you're harder because you're smarter. You think I'm smart? You, you're way smarter today for than sure. 10 years ago. But I'm also working exactly. harder too. Like, videos, by the way. Online, real, live, live yeah. library videos yeah. gave me confidence to do my show. Yeah. My ass wasn't getting on video. Yeah. Until I saw that, I go. He could do it, that cat, I could do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know what's crazy is how much harder I actually, harder. I, and that, that makes sense. That's why like, it's, it's momentum. Like, it's interesting. I just think it's so interesting. Stuff is tried and true. I'm fascinated by that. But you, you know, I'm re- thank you for asking that question because I don't know how he caught it, but if we have the right clip to that moment, boy, there's a lot of people that don't even do it once. Right. There's people literally, some of you have never replied to a single comment on a social media post that you've made for your business to somebody that replied to it. It's five seconds too. It's like why don't why don't they do it? You know. Can I say you referred to that in the beach body speech? Yes. Yeah, because you went to people's Instagram. So I did. I I, I I always do that. Yeah. I always do that because I'm curious. People, I when people, leave, I'm so weird. I don't do a lot of things I should do, and I like I do different things. There's no reason for somebody to leave a comment on my Instagram saying learn the hustle from Gary V. And for me to spend four minutes on that in a world where like click on that person, look at it, you know, versus all the things I should be doing, it's insane, but it gives me context. You know, it's so interesting, but boy, people aren't doing it. People love to say it. People hate to do it. 
I mean, think about how good you felt when you heard from Gary. Oh, the greatest. I would shit my, pa- listen, I wrote the blog post, it's the Ricky Henderson effect. That dude fucking winked and it's been forever. Fucking love Ricky. A wink. It's how I got Oprah on Instagram. Go look at Oprah's first picture on Instagram. It's me. Fat me. <laughs> I got it because I asked, like she was trying to get it. I was like, did you ever wink at anybody on set? She like, what do you mean? I'm like, did you ever wink at anybody while you were in between commercial break taping your show of the people in your audience? She goes, of course. I'm like, do you understand they've been telling that story for the last 30 years? So take one hour of whatever the fuck you're doing and spend it on that over two and three and seven and nine minutes at a time. Can I give you a short little story real quick? Sure. So I was we can talk about your mom because I'm still trying to win her over. She's, I, good. I, we, she's starting her own business. She's opening a salon and everything. She's crazy and she loves that out of school. She's totally fine. It's, thank you for your help. But anyway, so I was listening to Lewis's podcast the other day. Lewis House. Yes. And he had, uh, it was Elizabeth Gilbert. Um, I don't know who she is. What's that? She wrote like Eat, Pray, Love. Eat, Pray, Love, yeah, it's yeah. a big book. Um, I know so, that. So she was giving I've heard of that. Example of, uh, she was talking about Oprah in it, and she says, this is why I love Oprah so much. There was a, this big conference she does with like 20,000 people speaking at, in stadiums, and she had this woman from, this little girl from the Make-A-Wish Foundation there, and, and everyone gave her a lot of attention. Like she could stand up, and Oprah said something. That wasn't the real thing. It was Oprah then said, you know, there's this other girl that makes me really reminds me of myself, she loves to read, she's so passionate, and she actually brought out the girl's sister, who doesn't get any attention. Of course. Because the Make-A-Wish yeah. Foundation woman, the yeah. girl, gets all the attention, yeah. and her parents yeah. are so close to her. Of course. And she made that one girl yeah. extremely special. It's really I, cool. I had no opinion towards Oprah at all, though I hearing that story, I wasn't there. I'm sure so many people heard that, just that little thing that she thought to do, you know, makes all the difference. Yeah, and I was super mad at Oprah, because that's easy. That's the $50,000 donation. What's hard is actually replying to people on social media. Everybody's got different stories. It's cool. That's why I'm super careful to judge anything. Unless I really know it. You know? Life is interesting. Sure is. Please. The stuff that you bought on eBay. Yes. Where did you sell that? I gave it. I gave it to my sister to sell. Boy, I love that game. It's just you know, the level you're playing out with commerce is a little bit different. The Snapchat thing, guys. I'm getting emails from people that are homeless that made a hundred bucks garage selling. It's game changing. Homeless. That's actually, by the way, that is my big little, back to, I'm going very micro right now, trying to figure out this homeless people have smartphone thing that I'm really, that I'm, I'm really into it. I'm like, there's something real here. I need to figure this out. The same way I won on, you know, the breakfast club, the same way I won on like 20 year olds. I'm like, you know, I don't want to be that guy. Like, oh, I'm going to help, the, I don't, I'm going to be, I'm not going to sell my SaaS product, like, but I'm going to learn and I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn. There's something really powerful there. The most powerful device in the world, and so many people that have the least have it. Never in a time in life has that been the case. Gotta figure that out. Gotta figure that out. I will. The eBay thing is real. It works on so many levels for me. D Rock and I are gonna do a full pledged all in Daily V on, on garage sales. It's gonna be following me to the garage sales. You, I addressed this on one of the episodes. There were people that said I staged it. What the fuck's the matter with people? They're like, there's no way there's tags on this from a garage sale. Like, have you been to a garage sale? People sell brand new shit they never even opened. We're Americans. We buy shit and don't even use it. Anyway, um, we're gonna tape the whole thing. I'm gonna post it, and then we're gonna. Sell. It's gonna be the whole thing. You're so right because I've re- done. And after I watched that, I went. But through I, their stuff. at the right time. Oh. Oh my God. I asked Misha the other night, Misha, what have we learned from garage selling? She goes, that you can get better deals at garage sales than the toy store. <laughs> That's right. Can't teach environment, but you can create new environments, little micro environments, right?
I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you.